Welcome to uh, the solutions to all the problems that I gave in the chapter one lecture for quantum mechanics theory and experiment. Getting starting with problem one, you just had to calculate the mean and the variance of this data set. Uh, mean is just an average, and the variance is just the difference between the average of the x value squared and the square of the average x value. It's pretty straightforward. You have the definitions here and the calculations here. Uh, oh, the average, I guess I apparently forgot to write that uh, down, but the average here actually was 10.3. I wrote 10.3 here. I meant to put it there. And then basically you get uh, the variance here and you get the, if you want to find the standard deviation, you can. For problem two, you were just supposed to find the probability for each individual value of x in the data set. And that's pretty straightforward. Problem three was a little more complicated. You had to actually find the constant c that would normalize the probability density over the range uh, interval negative uh, 10 and 10. And then after that, compute the average value of x and the standard deviation. So to normalize something, you have to set the integral equal to 1, because you need to have a 100% probability of finding it within that range. So to do that, you just set the integral of the probability distribution equal to 1. But because it's of this form where you have something squared plus 4, you have to put it in this integral form, which you can then use u substitution to find the antiderivative. So doing that, you can set u equal to 5 over 2, negative th minus 3 over 2 times x, find the du. And you can plug this in, and you get, uh, have this still set equal to 1 and you find that the constant is about equal to 2. The average value for x is found by just putting x in front of the probability distribution. And you can think about this, this makes sense. This probability distribution just gives you the probability of having a value x per very small portion of x. And so when you're multiplying that really small portion of x, that just gives you the probability of having that value of x. So then multiplying that by x, you have x times that's probability. And then you sum over all the possibles or all the possible states, and you get the average. The average value was 1.59. And then to find the standard deviation, you need to find the average of x squared. And you do that very similarly. And after finding the variance right here is 3.99, you find that the standard deviation is approximately 2. Problem 4 said to compute the standard deviation. However, it wasn't really uh, for computing. It was to kind of find out that this is a Gaussian. And that in, in the Gaussian uh, distributions, you have this form which tells you from which you can find the standard deviation and the mean. So really it's just looking for you to see that this alpha here is this the average or the mean and this beta is related to the standard deviation by a factor of the square root of 2. Problem 5, just a linear algebra problem for this given matrix, find the eigenvalues and normalized eigenvectors, and then prove that they are ortho orthogonal. Again, to find eigenvalues, you uh, subtract the eigenvalues uh, through the diagonal and find the determinant of that set equal to zero, which it just means that you're finding lambda for this equation right here, and the solutions for this are lambda equal to zero and lam lambda equal to two. Finding the eigenvector for lambda equal to zero, you just have the matrix minus the eigenvector or eigenvalue. And for here, the eigenvalue is zero, so you just have the same matrix. And then you have the eigenvector, and you have the, their product be equal to zero. 
so that you can solve for the relationship between these two components of the vector. And you find that x is equal to negative y, which means y is equal to negative x. So the normalized eigenvector for the lambda equal to zero eigenvalue is given right here. Through the exact same process, you can find this eigenvector. And uh, the proof that they're orthogonal is that the dot product between them is equal to zero. And you can also see this geometrically. If you have the, this right here would be an x and then uh, minus y vector. So you're going x minus y. So x minus y. And you have this vector down here. And then this eigenvector is x positive y. And so you end up visually with uh, orthogonality. And I hope these solutions uh, were beneficial and that you followed through and did the problems from my last uh, video. Anyway, look forward to my next video, which will be on chapter two from Quantum Mechanics Theory and Experiment by Mark Beck.